Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Well, welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. If you are joining today for the very first time, you're still a sweet pleasure seeker. You know why? Because you're looking for pleasure. Consent, which is our topic tonight, is a huge part of pleasure because without consent, there is no pleasure. I know. Now there is a bold statement, isn't there? Even when doing, you know, the kinky plays of, you know, playing the roles of non-consent, it's still consensual non-consent, and we'll get into that. For those of you who are brand new to this show and to the station ICN, we have Inspired Choices Network has tons and tons of shows to listen to with lots of uh, different live shows going on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays along uh, in different kinds of topics. So you could be having a topic about from self-help to money to you name it. And there are episodes in the archives that have tons of different content as well. So go to Inspired Choices Network, check out our podcasts and check out all of the archives. There's great shows to be listened to and watch. So The Pleasure Zone, this show is all about body, sex, pleasure. And the three things that I find the most important about that, which is consent, communication and curiosity. And we talk about consent, communication and curiosity pretty much in every show and some shows are dedicated to one of those. And today, that show that uh, I'm dedicating to is consent. And we're talking about consent in a very broad sense. I'm going to give you the definitions, the etymology. We're going to look at different kinds of consent. We're going to look at the modern view of consent as well. We're going to talk about the importance of having consent, because without it, with no consent, then that can lead to rape and sexual violence and all kinds of things we're not interested in having on this show. So I may talk about those things because we need to get out of the violence and out of the traumas in order to have pleasure, for sure. And we need to have some tools to be able to do that. And one of them is knowing how do we have consent. So we will be talking about different kinds of consent. There is a lot of different kinds of consent that are talked about in the business world. And some of those do apply to personal relationships as well. They're just not necessarily used in the same terminology, but I think they absolutely could be. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about how to and what you can do to create your own consent forms for sex. Because if you do play in the realm of kink, consent forms are a really good thing to have so that you don't end up going to court for something that could be construed as violence. And it's also for your safety, for your partner's safety. Consent forms, especially in kink, are really important. Okay, so let's start off with what is consent? So if we look at the word consent, consent is two different words. <clears throat> it's com, Latin for with, and sentire which is Latin for feel. And I may be pronouncing them incorrectly, apologies. I never did take Latin in school. So when we put the common sentire together, we get consentire, consentir. So consentire is to agree or accord or feel together, feeling together, which is not the same as one person feeling something and another person feeling something else. That would not be consent, right? Isn't that cool? And then if we move further, it goes into, uh, so that's Old Latin, then we go to Old French, would be consentir, consent, consentir, to agree or comply. And then in the 1300s, moving into English, Anglo-Saxon version, which is consent. And consent has to do with agreeing or 
<laughs> or um, giving assent or having the will to oppose. <clears throat> so knowing that you have the right, the power or the will to oppose. So it's when you actually, if you say yes to something, when you know you can say no, that's consent. If you are saying yes to something because you have no other alternative, that is not consent. That is actually when you are being um, coerced. So coercion and consent, not the same. And consent uh, definitely is different because you need to have certain faculties about you to consent, whether it's mental faculties, emotional faculties, physical faculties about you in order to consent. You cannot consent to something without certain information, right? So informed consent, and I, I'm sure that you've heard this word over the last few years, especially being used in the media. Informed consent is a really important one because uh, it is something that has been neglected a lot over the last few years. I'm not going to name names of governments that did that or doctors, but let's just say there were governments and doctors involved. And informed consent is the act of obtaining consent after informing the individual of all the possible outcomes and consequences of granting consent. So if you've not been given all the information and all the possible outcomes of something, you have not received informed consent. So to be and to have informed consent, you it must be given by people or persons who are competent to consent and have voluntarily consented. So there's been no coercion, no pushing, no, you'll lose your job if you don't do this. Or you'll, you know, you'll lose your relationship if you don't have sex with so-and-so, right? That's coercion. And being informed is to know all of the outcomes and have the ability to say, yes or no and not you know lose your job or lose your relationship over it so consenting informed consent is very important having all the information beforehand and being in volunteering to say yes so you have to be fully informed have the information behind you and in canada the legal age of consent here's funny thing is the legal age of consent in most provinces in canada which is where i live is the age of 16 for sex however the age of informed consent for other things like agreeing to business propositions or taking on legal matters is 18 and strangely recently the age of consent for anything medically done to you is 12. Oh, well, like, why are all these ages different? And how do you get, how is there this, there's a six year range, which in which a vast number of things occur, hormonally, physically, uh, even with education, there, there is a very big difference between a 12 year old and an 18 year old, much more different than it is, say, between a 25 year old and a 31 year old. There's a lot of growth that happens in that age, in that state, those stages of life. <laughs> and um, frankly, I'm not impressed with the fact that there are ages of consent at 12 when you don't even understand uh, necessarily biology to what you're agreeing to. And I also don't agree with the age of consent um, for sex being 16 necessarily, unless it's amongst 16 year olds with other 16 year olds. But a 16 year old having sex with a 30 year old is not informed consent. You don't really understand what's going on or the consequences, and there's probably something bigger going on. And I'm not an ageist. I had a child with somebody who was much older than me, and I'm married to somebody who's 11 years older than me. So I'm not an ageist. It's just when you are young, that is a vast difference compared to when you're older. Okay, some of these topics get me riled up <laughs> and get me a little juiced up. So I'm going to try and reel it in before I say things that get, get my show kicked off the air. So let's move on. We're going to move on to another uh, term that's used quite a lot in the business world, which is implied consent, which is the idea that um, you may be already involved in something. Say you're, <clears throat> say you're at an event and your picture is taken because you're at an event and it's assumed that because you're at this event 
that it's okay to take your picture. So that's implied consent. They refer to it as that participation in a certain situation is sometimes considered proof of consent. Now, this really is not cool when it comes to uh, all things to do with sex, because if you are participating, participation just means you're there necessarily. It doesn't mean you're actively enjoying the situation. Participation could also have you be there under uh, duress, under coercion, or anything like that, but you're still participating. And that is considered proof of consent. So implied consent to me does not and cannot apply to anything to do with sex or relationships. Participation is not consent in my mind when it comes to sex. Now, this might be different when it comes to business. That is not my field of expertise. I am giving you what I feel is the truth around relationship and implied consent. For example, when I have clients uh, who write to me on my website, through my website, and they might say um, that because they accessed me, they think that that's implied consent that they should be able to send pornographic stuff to me. I didn't ask for it, I didn't um, agree to it. So no, there was no, there was no consent given. <laughs> so um, I'm mentioning that because it just happened last week and the person got rather offended that I was like, excuse me, but that's not my job. And you did not ask my permission for this, so no. So these things are funny and they do happen. Now, we also have uh, another kind of consent called explicit consent. And that is, explicit consent is known as direct or express consent. When somebody um, says, or they authorize you uh, to do something. So explicit is using yes, I will do that. It's not the absence of no. And we're gonna talk about the enthusiastic yes after when we come back from our commercial. But for now, we're gonna just keep it to the different kinds of consent and the importance to have them. So explicit consent really being actively saying yes. It's like active consent where you are given a specific thing that you agree to, but explicit consent is saying yes to whatever it is. Do you agree to these terms? Yes, I do. Active consent is also being given a specific thing to agree to. So do you, like for example, do you agree to, uh, to be in having your hands tied up for 10 minutes? That's very specific. And then if you agree to that, if it goes over that time, then you know, you're that is breaching your contract of consent. So you need to get really clear on certain things. <clears throat> if you're not sure if you've if you've been in situations where you've uh, had implied uh, consent happen or passive consent, which is assumed consent unless stated otherwise, where people where you know somebody could be having sex with you and unless you say, uh, get away or you say something specific to their brain that they think is the correct word. So no is usually quite a clear indication of no, this is no. And you could say it aggressively. You could say it hyper enthusiastically. No, doesn't really matter because if the person has assumed that you're consenting, they might think that you're playing a game, right? So we know the old saying of no means no. Well, no actually does mean no. And uh, in, in some cases, it's getting to be to the point where you need to actually hear a yes. Because there are some very unclear lines going on and some very unclear communication going on in the world right now, especially around sex and consent. Now, there is a whole other category of consent called consensual non-consent, which is in in the kink uh, zone. <laughs> and so, in the kink in the kink world, CNC consensual non-consent is a form of role play that two or more people engage in that emulates some form of forced activity. So, consensual non-consent could be uh, the kink of playing rape. And as long as both people who are actively doing this have their safe word in place, they've agreed to this, the consensual non-consent is in place, they might even have a contract drawn up, that is different than 
uh, than you know being coerced or forced because it is a consent to the act of non-consent. So know that this can get confusing. That's why I really wanted to get clear on how do you know if somebody's consenting? Well, we're going to find out in the next segment. How do you know if somebody's actually consenting? We're going to look at what consent actually looks like. And then enthusiastic, yes. What does it look like? And what do we need to have in place? So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back after this break. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Today we're talking about one of the sexiest things out there called consent. Why is consent sexy? Because without it, it's not pleasurable. If you haven't consented to something or said yes to an activity or agreed to something, then it can feel very violent to the body. Whether it's a outright rape or a very uncomfortable situation where you leave confused and not knowing what you agreed to or not agreed to. Either way, it's gross. Let's get clear and let's make sure that moving forward, if you have ever had any of this gross stuff happen to you in your life, traumatic stuff happen to you in your life, then let's move forward and choose to have enthusiastic consent. And what is that? What is enthusiastic consent? So if you listen to the last part of the show, the very first segment, we looked at different kinds of consent and we'll probably tap back into those briefly here and there. So in case you missed it, we will be re recalling those. However, go back and listen to that so you can get really clear on the different kinds of consent. So enthusiastic consent, what does it look like? Ooh, enthusiastic consent is like, let's have a situation here. So you're in the middle of getting it on and all of a sudden you have this like great idea that you want to try something on your partner, something you've never tried before. And you're like, Ooh, I think I'd really like to put my finger somewhere fun. I don't know. It could be fun and interesting to stick my finger somewhere where the sun don't shine. And you think about that and you think that would be really fun to do. And your partner has no idea this is coming that could be alarming. So what do we do? We use our voice. Now, if you are, um, if, if you do not have speech, like if you, if you are, um, I don't know what the proper words are anymore, but uh, deaf. So I have, uh, my god sister is deaf. She doesn't speak. Um, she well she doesn't speak with with uh, verbally right so she uses sign language 
And often when I think about communication, I think about like, what would she do? <laughs> so uh, sign language would be what she would need to do or written consent, right? And I'm sure there are methods uh, I have not asked. So asking permission before you change the type or degree of sexual activity with phrases like, is so-and-so okay? Is it okay if I put my finger where the sun don't shine? Would that be okay? And they might be like, hmm, let's think about it. Maybe not right now. And then you honor that, fantastic. Because if they say not right now, then that's not an enthusiastic yes. That is not saying, yes, put your finger where the sun don't shine. It's a hmm, not so much. And at that point, it's really not about being a pushy asshole, right? So pushy assholes will be like, come on. Oh, what? you don't want to? Oh, you're being a chicken. Oh, you're so shy. Oh, why are you such a prude? Now that's the situation you walk away from because that person is not interested in consent at all. They're interested in coercion. So if they go into coercion, coercion is just another form of saying that person is a jackass, so walk away. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> so unless you are playing the consensual non-consent game, which needs to be put into place in advance so that you know what kind of play you're in for, which could be the coercion play, which you will have in that case, you'll have certain language that you've agreed to in advance that indicates to move forward. And it could be like, oh, I don't feel like it. But then in consensual non-consent, oh, I don't feel like it could be the call to action uh, verbiage that would have you have the, the partner who's um, asking the questions move forward. So you'd have a lot of these things in place those kinds of contracts and understandings can be very long and thorough. And I think if we treated all relationships like that, it would be ideal. So we need to get some thorough understanding under our belts for how we treat each other, whether that's in sex or in life, or even just with communications and how we work together. So asking permission before you change the type or degree of sexual activity with phrases like, is this okay? Is it okay if I do A, B, C, and D? And if they say enthusiastically yes, then you're good to go. If they do not enthusiastically say yes, then you're not good to go. Again, the caveat is unless you're under the consensual non-consent contract, and that's a different story. So, so another thing to look for with enthusiastic consent is confirming that there is reciprocal interest before initiating any physical touch. So, you know, asking, you know, you know, would, would you like to make out? Would you like to kiss? Would you like to, uh, you know, would you like to like be over clothes or under like on skin on skin? Like what works for you? And I know this sounds, this sounds to like my generation and older, like, oh, who has the time? And like, who wants to bother? By the time you ask, I'm gonna like lose my erection or oh, by the time I ask, I'm gonna like lose interest. Well, if you, if you have lost interest already, then it wasn't worth even attempting because if you cannot maintain that level of excitement for more than three minutes to have the conversation, you're not worth having sex with. Yep, I said it. So if you are able to have the few minutes of conversation pre any of this, pre even approaching each other's bodies, fantastic. So that, that even having somebody who's willing to ask you those questions can be incredibly sexy. And yes, I do know people out there who are like, Oh, it's so, like, I so don't want somebody who's going to ask me if I like anything. I just want them to do what they want to do. Well, the chances are, if you just want them to do what they want to do, you are not really connected to yourself or your body. So you probably could use some assistance, maybe some coaching. You can always connect with me for some coaching because there's something deeper going on that you're either doing people pleasing or you're ignoring yourself or you're not present in your body. Something's going on. And if you're not willing to have somebody ask you and respect you and be respected, there's something else going on. All right. So how do you confirm that it's reciprocal? Well, you can ask the question, would you like to, with 
would you like to blah, blah, blah with me? Would you like to, you know, touch butts with me? Would you like to like kiss me? Would you like to make out with me? So just confirming that right before any physical touch, especially if the person you're with has any kind of, for one, if you're neurodivergent and somebody goes to touch you without consent, it can be very alarming. And you don't always know who's neurodiverse or not because you can't tell by looking at us. So <clears throat> definitely asking permission because it's like having a, um, a world open up in your brain when you get touched. So in the field that I'm in, where I work on bodies, when people show up at my office and I work on their body, I usually give them the brief. I'm going to move your arms. I'm going to move your legs. If at any point you're uncomfortable, you just tell me because, you know, I've, I've um, at one time I went to go work on somebody and part of the work I was doing was to touch their feet and they just about kicked me in the head. Even though I'd warned them, I'm going to be touching you in these places, um, they forgot. And that was such a good reminder that by moving around and confirming with people like, I'm going to touch this, this is what's going to happen, um, has been really good. And it also helps clients feel safer, especially if they've ever had any touch concerns in their life or any kind of violence to their body, whether it was like being beaten as a child or sexual molestation or being bullied and hit, you know, hit at school, whatever it happened to be. Physical touch, especially if your love language is physical touch and then you've been abused with that can be very alarming. So needing confirmation prior to touch is huge. Okay. And also, um, like I was saying, even like with body work, when I work on somebody, I let them know, like, at any point, this is like your session at any point, if you're not comfortable, just let me know. And you just say stop, and it's a done deal. So, so you do this also in sex. Yes, they can stop. You could be mid orgasm and something may, may be affecting them, you know, you could, they could be having a traumatic flashback in the middle of sex and you need to honor your partner if they say stop and you just stop. So <clears throat> that is, you know, somebody who can actually do that can stop even in the middle and the height of, uh, you know, the sexual turn on is a demigod in my eyes. <laughs> like you, you're awesome. And we love you for those of you who stop when you're asked to and listen to yeses and listen to no's. You're the best. You're the sexiest on the planet. Why? Because you're smart. So next, one of the enthusiastic consent things can also be checking in with your partner and saying, you know, like if you're allowed to stop at any time, it's also good to say, is this still okay? <clears throat> So, you know, you could have somebody tweaking your nipples for like 25 minutes and your nipples are like, oh, holy Hannah. And for a lot of times when people have had abuse of any kind, they're not used to having the ability to say no or to stop or to even think that they count. So they won't say anything. They're just going to people please and let it happen. And then they'll be miserable <clears throat> about it. So if you check in and ask, is this still okay? Is what I'm doing still not only okay, is this pleasurable? Is this still pleasurable? If it's not pleasurable, we'll move on to something else. And then with the person receiving, it's always great to give positive feedback so that the person that, you know, if, you know, somebody is tweaking your nipples and you can go, I really like this. Thank you. Like, I'm like, this is hot. Thank you. Or moaning and groaning. You can also do that as an indicator. Although, um, Moaning and groaning can happen even if you're having violence to your body because it's just a body reaction and a somatic uh, action to the to the to the uh, arousal. But bodies sometimes have an arousal because they're being touched in a certain way. That doesn't mean there was consent, and that doesn't mean there's pleasure or desire. So, <clears throat> being really clear on checking in um, and just finding out is it still okay and giving feedback to your partner and your and also if you are tweaking those nipples giving feedback to like this is really sexy it's really turning me on i love this i know we're not used to especially my age and older so in our 40s and up i'm going to say i'm in my 40s even though i'm almost in my 50s in our 40s and up we tend to have this thing of not having the conversation 
we have a tendency to not say anything. So remember to check in on things. Uh, if your partner is hard of hearing, then have other forms of response you can do so that they know um, there may be touch involved, maybe reciprocating touch so that they know that you're enjoying it. Um, that way, you know, they don't feel weird like what's happening. I don't know if this person likes this or not. So providing feedback is really good. And definitely explicitly agreeing with a yes is really helpful. Or if you're not sure, you're like, well, I'm open to trying it and then checking in to see if they're still okay with trying it. You can also use physical cues to let the person know if they're still comfortable, like thumbs up is a good one, um, if that helps. And or nodding, or again, depending on like if they're if they are hard of hearing or whatever the situation happens to be, being able to give them cues so that they know what um, what you're what if you're agreeing or not. Okay, so just just certain things to know, like I've mentioned before, arousal does not equal consent. Arousal is just arousal because bodies get aroused. And a lot of times people who are sexual predators and perpetrators of sexual violence, they will just claim, well, the person was lubricated and they were, they had an orgasm and it was, you know, they enjoyed it. They were moaning. Well, they weren't necessarily moaning. So their body responded and they couldn't stop their body from responding. So, uh, and saying things like, well, you liked it. Well, you didn't necessarily like it. Your body got aroused, right? There's a really, really great book out there called um, Come As You Are, written by Emily Nagoski, N-A-G-O-S-K-I. And Emily Nagoski talks a lot about arousal and um, the difference between arousal and desire and pleasure. And I love it because she basically has summed up everything I believe in in that book. <laughs> and she has done an amazing summary as she is a, you know, she's a doctor of, of um, she's a sexologist, I believe, or she has her doctorate in human sexuality. Anyway, whatever it is, um, she's brilliant. And she's basically created a summary of everything I believe. So I love that book. It is fabulous. I encourage you to go out and get it while we're on our next commercial break. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. 
Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Today we're talking about consent. And if you're an avid listener of The Pleasure Zone, you know that one of my top three things that I talk about on the show are consent, communication, and curiosity. And I think they really go hand in hand really well in order to be able to have a very healthy, happy sex life and to have a fulfilled, pleasurable, intimate life with your partner or partners, whatever the situation is. So consent is really big. What does consent mean? So when we go back to what we were talking about in the first segment, consent has is from the Latin word com sentire. So com meaning together and sentire to feel. Consentire means to feel together. So when we feel something together or to have an accord or to agree, that is consent. That means that both parties agree and they both know what they're agreeing to. And and then translated down through to the French, consentir, and then it moved into the Anglo-Saxon, probably, version of consent. So fantastic. We've got this, this great word to let us know that we can feel things together. And when we're not feeling things together, there's an issue. So how do we know if we're feeling things together? Well, in the last section segment um, of the show, we were talking about enthusiastic consent, what it can look like, asking questions, letting your partner know that they can say stop at any time, letting, or that you can stop at any time too, because it goes both ways for the giver and the receiver, and both are givers and receivers, and it's all complicated and beautiful. When it's complicated and beautiful, it's all beautiful. So <laughs> using uh, also using different cues, physical cues, auditory cues, um, different cues so that everybody is comfortable about having, um, knowing that there is consent. Also being really clear that arousal does not equal consent. Arousal just means your body is responding to stimuli. Arousal means your body is responding to stimuli. It doesn't mean you have consented. If that was true, I like sit around my body and get turned on by watching documentaries. It doesn't mean I want to have sex with the TV that's showing me the documentary. So you hear what I'm saying? I hope you get that. So let's talk about what consent is not, because I think we need to be really clear on this. There are things that are, you know, implied consent, right? We talked about implied consent at the beginning of the show as well. And implied consent is like the participation in certain situations are considered proof of consent. So if you're showing up at a situation, that means, let's say, let's take um, this for an example. You show up uh, at a party and you might not know that you've entered a, uh, what's it called? a swingers party. Why? Because this has actually happened to me in this lifetime. You end up at a swingers party and you did not know you were at a swingers party. And that does not equal consent because hey, you didn't even know you were walking into a swingers party. So just because you showed up doesn't mean that you've given consent to get it on with anybody. I know, sounds crazy, but sometimes when you don't know what you're walking into and you've just been invited to a party and you find out after it's a swingers party, that can be a little bit confusing. So that does not mean just because you showed up that you have given consent. Um, it's a good thing when you find out that you've walked into a swingers party and you don't want to be there, that you walk away and that you have a way to walk away. So my, I had a, uh, my grandmother always had this thing for me that when I was like a teenager, she always knew I would like run, always thought I would like run away or join the circus or 
who knows what, but she always gave me this money. She put $25 in the bank account for me every month. And that's pretty considerable back in like 1990. It was when people were making $5 an hour, she would give me like, you know, some cash every month, which was great. And so, and I wasn't a big spender. So, you know, I had a couple hundred dollars in my bank. So anytime if I ever needed to run away, I had money, I could run away. And if I ever needed to escape from a party, I could call a cab. Like I always had a way to get out, which was awesome. And I think everybody, if you have teenagers or people in their 20s in your life that are going to parties and going out to places, make sure that they've always got a way to have an Uber home. Now we've got Ubers, right? Make sure that they've always got a way that they can get home that's covered, pay for, so they don't have to worry for waiting for friends who might be sticking around a dangerous party, but they've always got their way home. All right, that was a sidetrack, but let's talk about what consent is not, does not look like. So if you're in a situation and you've said no and the other person does not acknowledge it, then just because they didn't acknowledge it doesn't mean you've consented it, right? I'm gonna say that about 500 more times. Just because you said no, and the other person or persons didn't acknowledge it doesn't mean that you agreed to it. All right. And even if you said no many times and they didn't listen or do anything to stop, that doesn't mean that you consented. Even if you tried to fight and you still said no, and they still didn't stop, does not mean you consented. Sound like I'm talking from a personal story I am. So you can say no, and that means no, and it doesn't mean you consented. Just because they didn't stop, doesn't mean you consented. It took me a really long time to understand that. So a partner who also in this in this case like if, if you're not responsive if you're half asleep or drugged or upset or whatever and that doesn't mean that you automatically are giving consent oh you're just because you're not responding you must you must still want it you're just not responding no you're not responding so that's not consent you're not engaged in it that's not consent. You didn't agree to it. That's not consent. And you're upset about something going on. That's not consent. And just because the person can't say something, again, if they've been traumatized in any way in their life, and they've never been given the right to speak up for themselves or for what they desire, they don't know how to say, this doesn't work for me. They don't even know what to say to get you to stop because they've never been given the chance. So if you are a decent human being, you will note when somebody's visibly upset or non-responsive or disengaged, and you will stop and you will give them pause and you will ask, is there something that you would like me to do? Is there something that you would like to change here? Would you like space? And there are other questions you can ask too. I also want to point out that wearing certain things, if you are wearing a bikini on a beach that doesn't entitle somebody to slap your butt. And I think actually it was really good. Uh, I was at Comic-Con on the weekend and there they have really big signs out there that cosplay is not consent. And there are people walking around in costumes all the time. That doesn't mean you can go up and touch them. And I love that they wrote that because some of the costumes are very uh, revealing. And I know that there were, I could feel it. There were people there who were like, they had a full on desire to want to touch people with no, with not having to ask consent because they're like, you're in character. I should be able to do what I want to you. You're still a human being. You're not the character. You're dressed as the character. So not consent. Wearing certain clothes like lingerie doesn't mean you want to have sex with somebody necessarily. And sometimes wearing things that are sexy can make you, if, if this has happened in your life where you've worn sexy clothes and it's been assumed that you want to be touched, you might have an aversion to it. And that's 
okay, so that's a conversation to have with your partner too. They're like, okay, I'm not comfortable wearing this because for me in the past, it's like always meant that there's going to be action and I don't necessarily want action. Um, but to your partner, you know, it might mean something different. But just so you know, certain clothes do not mean consent and kissing does not necessarily lead to fucking. I said that and I did. Kissing can just be kissing. I don't know about you, but I was like five the first time some boy planted one on my on my lips. Again, no consent, we were five. But it was also not assumed that we were gonna have babies after that because we didn't even know it could lead to babies. So kissing, or maybe he did, I didn't. He was six and I was five, so he probably knew more. Uh, but but uh, it didn't necessarily mean that we were gonna go further, right? So yeah. And then also, if somebody is not the legal age of consent, especially for sex, we can't in whatever state you're in is always different in different places in the world. So whatever the legal age of consent is, you need to be of legal age to consent. You can't be younger to legally consent. If you are drugged or if you are drunk or if you're being pressured or if you're being intimidated or coerced, or if somebody is using fear tactics towards you, that is not consent. When you succumb to fear tactics and coercion, that is not consent. Does that sound familiar, fear tactics and coercion? We've had a lot of that for the last few years, yeah. So assuming you have permission also to engage in a sexual act because you've done it in the past. So if you've had anal with your partner in the past, that doesn't mean they're agreeing to anal today. So you just need to be really clear and ask, you know, would you like to, and then fill in the blank what you'd like to do. All right. We're really clear, I hope now, on what is not consent. And we're going to move on to how do you make a contract for some fun times with your lover so that you can have a consent form that's really clear and that you've both gone through your do's and don'ts, maybe's list that you can find on my website. You can download that. And then that's a really vanilla version. Uh, you can absolutely add things. You can look up all the different paraphilias, all the philias, all the different paraphilias in the world if you want to add things to your list. And then, um, and then we're going to get ready to write a sexual consent form when we come back from this commercial break. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. We are talking about consent today. We have a few minutes left, and I'd like to share with you guys some ideas on how to create a consent form regarding sex. So if you're brand new to the sex world, this is a great time in starting to create sexual consent forms with you and your lovers. And it can be such a fun way to explore what some of the things you enjoy um, could be added to that list, right? It's another way to open discussion with your lover to see, you know, would you be interested in oral sex? Are you interested in oral sex indoors, outdoors, in the shower, out of the shower, on the bed, out of the bed, in the car, out of the, like you can get into details, right? I'm just using oral sex because it's a fairly common one. 
Um, and then all the different locations. Well, you can look at all of these things, different locations, different things. And again, you can go to my website, Milica Jelenic, M-I-L-I-C-A-J-E-L-E-N-I-C.com. You can go on and you can get my pleasure, do's, don'ts, and maybes list. And you can just use that as a foundation to help you understand what you are interested in. If you wanna be able to figure this consent form out with your lover, you can always book a 15 minute meeting with me and we can go over the consent form. If you do have a lover, I encourage you to bring them in with you so that we can go through a consent form together. You can actually find them online. There are several uh, form letters you can get if you look up sexual consent forms, there are lots of them. If you really can't find one, let me know. I was given several through my sex and intimacy coaching courses. Um, they're really convenient to have. So what do we want to include in those consent forms, especially the sexual consent forms? We want to include um, re in really clear terms, the intent of both the adults involved. Again, I really encourage you to be an adult and the age of consent and also be able to consent, right? So if you're not of sound mind, body, or any of that, you cannot consent, obviously. Um, so if anybody's trying to get you to sign one of these and you happen to be listening to this and you're like, I can listen to this, but I can't consent because, you know, maybe I have bipolar or something and I need, I need to just like, I'm not sure who I am right now. Don't sign anything and don't agree to that any terms. So, uh, so really when you do this, you can look at some, like with sexual consent forms, you can look at certain timelines, right? So you could go in the next month, we, we're going to explore these four things. So maybe a new thing each week. And then you can play with that list and you can rewrite your next one. You can rewrite your next consent list so that you know. And it's also a really fun way to get like new ideas and fresh ideas going in your relationship is to get some consent forms going. Get the exact permissions as well. So if some of the permissions might be um, in certain areas, like say this, you can tie my hands up in the bedroom only, not you know in the kitchen, not in a garage, not in the basement, uh, bedroom only. Uh, and it needs to be tied only my hands to my hands, not to a pole, get really specific, right? And with what, it may be certain materials. So you can see how even one act of hands tying could become very, uh, you can get so very precise on what you're agreeing to. So you can imagine these scenarios in your head. And if you're not sure, just write down the things you're willing to experiment with and that you also write down what your safe word is and try and keep your safe words consistent throughout your relationship is really handy. If you don't have a safe word, some of the most standard safe words in the world are the traffic light colors. So Red is go, yellow is, hey, slow down, you're entering the crazy zone that I'm not comfortable with, and red means stop. And these, you know, red, yellow, and green can be really handy ways of being able to operate in your relationship in general to just say red, and you're, it's not something that usually people just randomly blurt out colors, unless you're a funny family. Um, so you could use those red, yellow, and green terms, even in relationship when it comes to conversations where you'd like to just say, like, I'm not interested in talking about this right now, red. This is a red zone. And it can be really clear. And the more you get really clear with your partner on these statements, these requests, then you'll feel less inclined to have to explain yourself over and over again, or uh, you might not even be interested in explaining yourself. It's just a gut reaction. Red. Enough said. No explanation required. Because honestly, how unfun is it to explain yourself all the time? So no explanation required. It's red. Done deal. So having some sexual consent forms in place can be incredibly handy in order for you to have a much more pleasurable sex life. So go find one this week on, you know, go Google search it, go DuckDuckGo search it. You can find them everywhere. I found one on uh, in, even on Pinterest uh, this afternoon, <laughs> just out of curiosity, I was seeing how easy are they to find. So go get one. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich.
The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.